Okay, good morning and uh, welcome once again, everyone. We'll pray and get started for with uh, today's class. Uh, I want to request someone from the online batch to open this time with prayer. Could you please uh, lead in prayer? Any one of our students? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we once again thank you for this uh, time of study. We pray, Father, that as we get into your word, Lord, that uh, you lead us through your word, Father, and minister to us, Father. We pray that whatever we are going to learn, Father, we'll be able to apply the same in our lives, Father. And uh, we also pray for a blessing upon our entire faculty and all the students here in the Bible College. We ask all of this. Heavenly Father, in thy precious name, in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 And thank you. Um, we saw how we can exercise authority. We saw some of the terms that uh, are found in the ministry of Jesus. Things like cast out, destroy, uh, what else? Resist. Right? So different, different ways in which we can stop the enemy. From working, we can also uproot his plots and schemes against us. And we saw other powerful ways in which we can be free from oppression, demonic oppression. Things like prayer, uh, agreement in prayer, righteous actions, making restitution. Making restitution means if something has been done wrong, Okay, if something has been done wrong in the past, if we take responsibility and we say, sorry, okay, I should not have done it. So you make restitution for it. Maybe you did the mistake or somebody else from the previous generation did the mistake. You, When we make restitution for it, automatically we are setting things right. Then again, the enemy cannot interfere. Right. So these are all very practical things. So what happens in our, in our uh, life? When, let's say, there is some situation and we are trying to resolve it. One, of course, is through prayer. Then we take authority if we sense that some demonic um, opposition is present. Now, we may keep doing these things, rebuking, cancelling, destroying. And let's say nothing is changing. What would we do? Suppose nothing is changing. How to, how to go forward now? Same situation, same pattern. So then what should a believer do? You would continue to pray and uh, wait on God. OK, we'll continue to pray. We are already doing that. And you try to pray. kind of you know, seek God's for uh, a specific uh, verse or ask him to speak to you of if hmm. there is more than uh, asking God of what more should I do? Hmm. It's better to ask, you know, what is it that you want me to do in accordance to your will, your Okay, good. Reading? So, uh, correct. We are doing everything. Prayer, you know, cancelling, uprooting, everything we are doing. But still the situation is not changing. And we feel like something is missing. So, would you just say that uh, where Jesus says this kind of thing that can be casted out only by prayer and fasting? Okay, fine. So, imagine we are praying, prayer we are fasting, fasting also. Then, what to do? It's not changing. Yes, uh, did someone want to, okay, bind and lose. So someone saying bind and lose. What else can we do? We'll send out some more prayer requests or uh, reach out to more pas uh, pa pastors to agree with you in prayer and yeah. ask so, for them. Correct. Prayer of agreement is already there. We are agreeing, we are praying. Everything we are doing, whatever. Okay, we said sorry, we set the situation that everything full course whatever we studied we are doing now what to do huh wait okay we need to wait that's correct we have to wait some more little more patience we need okay what else what else will we do if we are in that situation 
yeah continue to keep praising god <laughs> it's like uh, everything we are applying right whatever we learned yeah so that's good keep doing all these things okay keep doing everything but we have to ask the question is there something that i should do more of right so maybe uh, let's say we are praying we are fasting we are declaring we are praising all that we did but we did not we did not uproot the stronghold stronghold is still there then when we are fasting praying declaring but stronghold is still there so the thing we missed to do is we didn't uproot the stronghold you got it that is not broken that is not removed so that's the issue see for example if let's say there is a tree big tree okay very big tree i cut the tree tree is gone but later i'm seeing some small uh, you know like a, a few leaves and few few this ones are coming out but i already cut the tree no what's the problem the root is still there the root is still there so i have to go after the root and how to now get rid of the root i have to pray like what you said is actually correct do everything and ask god like you know what is it that i'm missing lord where am i what is it that i'm missing maybe that root i never addressed it maybe there are issues maybe i have to go through you know uh, some kind of counseling maybe there are more issues i have to work it out i have to forgive there are many other things that i'm still not dealing with right or maybe god may say you need more wisdom so i can go talk to somebody who is uh, more spiritually stronger than me i say okay brother please help me um, i don't know what to do i'm doing everything but i'm stuck then you can pray together and god will show god will show okay you should do this maybe you try doing that so the point is even when we have done everything and we are not seeing a change maybe there is something somewhere uh we are we are not focusing on that we have missed it you know something like that so we have to figure out what i am missing and only god spirit can help us in that so that's the way to go forward okay so uh, only like if we say okay uh, only i am pray i am praying i'm praying 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 a lot but there is something more something else which may have been missed out so god, it problem is not with god why is my thing not changing why is you know this problem still persisting god is not doing anything we should not say that it's not like god is not doing anything god is doing he only usually how god works is he'll show the way right he'll give the uh, instruction then when we act on it then change will come all right so these are all things like not just in deliverance but even uh like in general like faith in our lives right there are times when we feel i am doing everything still why it's not changing one is time what diksha said sometimes we have done we have to wait but maybe there is something which we are not focusing on we are missing that so pray and ask god god what I, what am i missing lord why is why is it still in that same situation something is not happening right then god will show okay apply wisdom or um, you know resolve this resolve that forgive this person forgive then when we do that suddenly we'll see there'll be a freedom there'll be a uh, liberty right there'll be victory in our lives okay uh, there are some more answers here on the chat thank you for the answers okay uh, andrew says leading of the holy spirit we need the leading of the holy spirit that's true yeah and uh, shani is saying angelic assistance yeah in if that is a requirement then yes angelic assistance so exercising authority in different sphere, spheres let's come to this these are all like simple chapters uh, where we've already spoken many things earlier so it will be easy for us to cover this so whatever we learned till now we need to apply okay we need to apply so first and foremost we have to apply in our own personal lives okay so how to be free 
how to be free of uh, demonic oppression how to be free of um, um, uh, you know or rather how to overcome the the works of the evil one in our own personal lives that's the question so what we can do is we can recognize the strategies of satan okay so we said that satan generally uses um his tactics of um, accusing people deceiving people tempting people uh, or you know maybe uh, opposing them or oppressing them bringing some form of obstruction so the first thing in our personal lives is we have to identify what is satan what is satan see we do go through lot of challenges not everything is satan isn't it we've already said that we can't blame the devil for everything okay he'll feel very upset he's like you people are doing it and simply are blaming me okay but so what is satan that's the first thing we have to identify if something is be because of satan then you address it in the way that we have discussed so far right uh, rebuking him and casting him out and all but if the issue is not satan then we should not simply say that the devil is doing it maybe we ourselves have kept a door open right and that is why things are happening so the first thing in our personal lives is identify if something is the devil or not if it is the devil then you deal with it you deal with that oppression all right so identifying is the first thing so now let's imagine we identified and uh, we are constantly feeling accused what to do like satan is telling us oh you're not good enough you will never serve god you will never uh, you know your life will never change so what to do now if let's say it's not just me i identified this is not normal i am coming under the oppression of demons now what to do hmm? rebuke okay rebuke good good answer anything else we can do <coughs> use the word okay so in these moments what helps is uh yes take authority you rebuke the devil you bind the the uh, voices in your head and strengthen yourself in the word who we are in christ okay so i need to go back to that and i need to make myself strong in it so that is the way to exercise my authority in that situation so in each situation <coughs> we need to do what is needed identify and then do whatever is necessary and in that way we'll keep coming out of it now is it possible uh, that uh, you know once we are born again we we are already victorious right every sunday we take the bible and we say we are victorious so if we are victorious then uh, will satan trouble us will we still have problems with the devil okay great what if we become you know very mature will we still have problems with the devil yes even if you know like we are in the ministry or whatever see this will not change the attacks will not change how we deal with it is what is important at every stage we have to learn to deal with it don't be surprised like oh i'm i'm so i'm growing in the lord why am i facing all this no whether you're growing not growing everyone satan will attack that's his job he will do it so don't be surprised at any point in life if we are coming under an attack it's normal right so, but the thing is we have to live in such a way that satan has no opportunity so live in such a way that we don't give satan any opportunity so we have talked about open doors isn't it what are open doors what do open doors come from sin if there is sin in my life then constantly he can attack and then i should not wonder how come he is attacking because i am not overcoming sin right uh, let's say there is unforgiveness unforgiveness bitterness in our hearts that's an open door satan can keep attacking and then we are wondering why is this happening i don't have forgiveness okay what else we said that uh, words the words that we speak so if we speak words uh, where uh, you know it's not aligned to the word of god 
no anything some people some christians i've heard people say oh i am cursed have you ever heard that i don't know but i have heard i in fact i heard a believer say that uh, i think we are cursed my family is cursed but how can you say that with your mouth as a believer you should never say things like that so when we say things like that we are coming under agreement with the devil then a lot of things are happening in the family it's not god's mistake we made an agreement with our tongue got it so the words which we are speaking if we are speaking faithless words words of doubt unbelief then it's an open door he can easily come he can attack okay so these are all things that we should check okay am i giving place to the devil in any of these ways um uh, if i am then you know my rebuking my doing other things is of no consequence first of all i should make sure that these issues are not there when i am submitted to god do you remember we said that the more we are submitted to god the greater is the lordship of christ on our lives so in that way in the personal life we can overcome so submission is the first thing when we submit ourselves to god we can overcome the devil so now let's imagine that um we have done everything okay and now we are free also some uh, some issue was there some uh, oppression was there let's take for example fear we had fear and uh, we have overcome fear and we are completely free now what will we do if we face fear again if again fear comes what what to do okay yeah yeah so the same thing and hopefully we are stronger right this time so let's imagine we are stronger and uh, we continue to do the right things but again fear is coming so then is there a problem with what we are doing because first time it worked second time it feels like fear has come back so are we failing why why is it like coming back why is it resurfacing the symptoms are resurfacing i think we have to ask ourselves where we went wrong okay so we have to ask ourselves where we went wrong okay let we let's imagine we asked ourselves where we went wrong and we found out that we didn't go wrong okay nothing is wrong everything is okay but fear is back now what to do just uproot the fear okay uproot the fear uh fine done but fear is still there what to do cast it out uproot it if the fear keeps resurfacing and it keeps coming back and you've done what you've done in the past and it is still not gone so just continue to strengthen yourself more in the word you know just uh, if that has gone to a different level we also need to increase our potential and our level okay. rather than uh, because my my mind my mindset and thought process is like the moment we keep uh, thinking about you know what i did wrong mm. where i went wrong then yeah. we kind of uh, pushing ourselves into more of a sin consciousness sort of thing yes. so it's not about allowing god to work freely yeah. we ourselves are creating that hindrance and that barricade that you know mm. uh, maybe something is not thing so it can't be that you know if uh, i need a deliverance from any uh, thing from god mm. so if i'm only depending only on what i do so it's like i'm trying to keep god away Mm. is it uh, yeah no it's fine like what you're saying is we we have to become right, right. and we have to become strong right. i'm accepting everything uh and my point is Again. we have done everything we have done better also we have done right also on our side everything is correct mm. but fear is still back then mm. how to deal with it you're sure that there is no open door you're fully submitted to god you're victorious Mm. and it went away we already conquered it but now you're experiencing it again like how do you how do you uh, understand that situation when everything is right there's nothing more to do everything is done in your heart you're clear 
I'm already delivered. You're clear. Maybe, you know, people have prayed for you. Your pastor, leader, everyone is clear. You're fully free. People are sure. But it has again come back. You cast the entire thing to God and say like, God, you know, it's, you've commanded in your word not to worry. Yeah. Or not okay. to fear. <laughs> sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. You go back to God and you trust God. Uh, yes, Brother Kofi. We can, we, can, we can also ask for God's direction. Maybe sometimes we have to make a special offering to God. Huh. <laughs> special offering. Okay. Um, so, uh, Brother Kofi, here the point I'm making is when all is right, you've done it all. You've made that special offering. Everything is done. Still, you're experiencing it. Then how do we understand that? Um, so... I am seeing different answers here. Okay, because we spoke about fear, Brother San Sanjay is saying, don't focus on fear, focus on God's love, for God's lo perfect love drives out fear. Lucy, speak the written word of God and renounce the enemy. Yes. And uh, Shani? Well, I was going to say that you were saying that you did all those things and it came back. Um, yeah. I was just saying that's just the devil trying to make you think that um, that you haven't, I guess, kind of like when you're sick and you're healed from something, you get symptoms, that's just the devil trying to, trying to put symptoms on you to make you think that you're not healed, yeah. you really are, kind of same way with fear. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, good. So Shani's answer is correct. Okay, so what Shani is saying is, uh, all of you are correct, but this is the answer I was looking for. So the thing about Satan is that what he'll do is he'll try to test the waters to check whether you fully believe, whether you are healed, whether you are fully delivered, whether your situation is fully set right or not. So after everything is resolved, uh, some people like to call it false symptoms, false symptoms. So what he does is he'll, he'll give some situation to make you feel like oh nothing has changed i'm still sick i'm still under oppression but in those moments we have to recognize hey this is false i'm already free of this i'm not going to accept it okay so it's a very deceptive thing that satan does so when you get these uh, even after you're fully healed we're getting these symptoms we just have to rebuke and say no, this is false. I'm not accepting it. I'm already healed. Satan, you cannot deceive me. You cannot deceive me. So that is something that Satan generally does. And we must be aware of it. Even in the case of deliverance, we are fully free. But a situation may come where it's as if nothing has changed. But then it's false. right? It's, it's just a trick of the devil. And so... We can be, uh, we can kind of be assured. Don't take it as if, oh, I conquered. Again, Satan is conquering. No, no, he's not conquering. You have done everything, right? Then how can there be no victory? There is victory. Don't take it as redominance. Again, Satan has come back. If we believe it, yes, again, everything will start all over again. But it's just a deception. Okay, so we must not give in to it. Yeah, if few things we are seeing changing, you say, no, I'm not accepting. I'm already free. This cannot come back. I shut the door on you once again, Satan, in Jesus' name. Right? Yes. Uh, fine to just say that, you know, or believe uh, it's already done in the spiritual realm. Huh. It's, I can't see it in the natural realm, huh. but it's already done in the spiritual realm and you just ignore and choose not to react. Um. Yes. Is it ignorance? Or, no, no, we we can't ignore it. Uh, but I'm saying we need to accept that yes, Satan is doing this, or recognize is a better word. Recognize that he's doing it, and then you can rebuke. You can you know keep doing the other things, but don't ever accept that there is a re-entry. Got it? So this is a trick of the devil, where he pretends like. He is regaining access. So we should be aware of this and never accept it. 
so that's also something important in our personal lives if you've already gained victory uh you say no devil you have you you have not entered i know that and uh, you have no place first of all there's no place for you to enter and uh, i i just um you know i resist these false symptoms uh, and i will not accept it i will not accept it right so uh, the thing about satan is like when we go to deliverance shortly we'll go to steps of deliverance there's a little bit of stubbornness stubborn because yes he goes out but he'll try again and again and again so that stubbornness is there and we should recognize it which is why us being careful after deliverance is very important very very important it's not over once you cast out a demon it's not over so much work is there to do after that okay fine so this is a little bit of practical things in our own personal lives if one does not sin and lives a life of prayer to huh. god with faith with does satan still operate in one's life okay uh, i couldn't hear very clearly could you could you re repeat it or uh, maybe uh he is asking huh? a, per a person who is living a righteous life okay still why the satan is uh, oppressing him yeah so see we can never escape it that's what i'm trying to say as long as we are alive in the world oppression satan will try to um, attack every believer we can never escape it we just have to learn to fight it okay i don't know whether he got you got the answer okay great yeah so so that is the way we overcome our uh, authority right we we overcome uh, the devil in our personal lives now let's talk about overcoming the enemy or exercising authority over our families so what can we do for our families today i'll only ask questions okay so you talk i'll i'll listen how to uh, exercise authority over our families hmm? okay declare god's word family prayer we want to protect our family from satan what what to do <laughs> hmm? ha huh, proclaim what the blood of jesus has done that's correct we can do that what else what else <laughs> good revelation i got uh, when pastor rashish preached on good friday service huh, no yeah because somewhere uh, subconsciously or what i used to always utter the word i plead the blood of jesus mm. and the insight that he shared about you, know, you need not plead any more because yes. it's already done and you can proclaim yeah so yeah yeah sure yeah we don't have to plead the blood the blood is already shed for us we just have to proclaim the power of the blood of jesus yes true so pray mm. declare the word uh, declare what the blood of jesus has done for us anything else we do for our families whose prayers are powerful in the family together okay then in agreement that would be a much more powerful compared to just one person yes so prayer of agreement oh. agreed okay, okay. And now what else who else whose prayers are powerful in a family setting head of the family very good authority structures remember we said the husband the parent the mother the father so the prayers are very very powerful so if we are in that position then we should pray and we can cover our family members and uh, there will be a greater protection right over their lives so this is the way in which we exercise authority now uh, imagine a, yeah question now, yeah? despite doing all of this there are attacks that happened this right doing all of this there are attacks <laughs> yes in a scenario like you know husband is also praying wife is also praying yes i'm yes. just taking my own example yeah so in that scenario it's like hellfire 
Yeah, so that's the thing, no, Akhil. I'm saying uh, when we do everything, maybe there is something which we have not, uh, uh, like, we've not understood. Maybe there's one point or one step which is missing. You got it. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, we don't have enough faith or we are making a mistake. It's not like that. But think very objectively. Maybe there is something which has not been dealt with. Which is why I'm saying we need to pray and ask uh, the Holy Spirit, please show us what are we missing, and then deal with that situation. That would help. That would help. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. So yeah, this is how we are going to exercise authority in our family. So imagine you can see, you can feel Satan entering. What would you do? He's entering, right? And uh, he's creating whatever, quarrels and all, what would you do in your family? Immediately, what would you do? You, you're sensing Satan is trying to attack. Yes, okay. I don't know if what I did was right, but when I felt like, you know, uh, these kind of attacks were not of the person, but it could be... Uh, uh, it's more about uh, you don't it's not the flesh and blood it's about the spiritual warfare so i don't know if what i did was right but i mm. chose not to react and chose i chose not, to, not to respond okay and okay. it didn't help it kind of you know it just took matters in a different uh, span over a period of time okay. but i just continued to pray i just knew it was not in my realm to yeah uh, think sure okay i i see your stand because you are strong in the faith you're saying okay i'm not going to react uh I understand that. But one thing we can do is, in because we are discussing exercising authority, right? We did everything, prayer, fasting, declaring, everything we did. One more thing what we can do is, you can use the authority through those words. Remember? Rebuke, bind, lose. So I do that. Like if I sense like, okay, I, I'm sensing something coming in, immediately I'll, I'll speak it out. I rebuke you, you spirit of this, that. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I don't give you any place in the name of Jesus. So we need to do that because we are we are stopping the devil. It's like, you know, we remember we said bind is what? Like handcuff, isn't it? So we have to do that. And I remember once we had prayer here. I think the last batch was here last year. Um, uh, no, not your batch, correct, the, the other batch. So when we were doing the uh, month of prayer, towards the end, pastor was guiding us. And then he said, uh, OK, let's take authority and let's pray against the devil. Let's uh, exercise our authority against the devil. And at that time, some of us, we were praying like, uh, Father, we pray that uh, you will you will stop the enemy. Uh, we, we pray that he will be bound things like that. So he just stopped us. He said, no, don't pray to the father. Speak directly to the devil. Speak directly to the demons. So then we changed how we were praying. Instead of saying, uh, you know, heavenly father, father, don't pray to God. Just speak to the demons. Just speak to them, identify them. And we have to like, you know how you scold, right? You, you may scold uh, maybe a pet or something. You, you need to be like that. Say de demons, we take authority over you in the name of Jesus. We bind you in the name of Jesus. You spirit of strife, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. So you have to speak to the spirits like that. That is what rebuke is. Rebuke is not like, uh, dear God, I rebuke the demon. Not like that. Take authority. See, because ignoring will not actually help. Because somebody has to do the work of going against the devil. So take a moment. Just go against the devil. Say, so you spirits, I will not let you do this. Like, you got to get a little angry, right? Got to get angry and say, you can't do this. God has already done good things in my life. You cannot stop it. Like, you got to get a little angry with the demons and rebuke them, bind them, cast them out. So that's the way we deal with it, right? We may be even doing it in our prayer time, but do it. Say, I will not allow you. You can't come inside. So these are the kind of prayers that one has to pray. Then we are exercising, you know, authority. Okay, got it? I hope it's helpful. 
I'm just trying to be practical. Okay, fine. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you for the answers in the chat as well. Let's move on. So now we understood regarding the family, how to exercise authority over uh, when we are doing ministry, when we are, you know, praying for healing, praying for other things, and ministering in people's lives. So there are different ways. There are different ways. The main way is build them up in the word of God. That is very helpful. Remember we said sometimes we are preaching the word and the word itself carries the anointing. The word itself carries God's life. So when we preach the word, people are automatically set free. Isn't it? Those strongholds are broken. Demons are leaving. All that is happening when the word itself is being preached. When the faith is being built up. So that is the first thing in ministry. To proclaim the word. The truth of God's word. Establish people in the truth of God's word. Then of course comes to minister uh, with the anointing. One is word. One is anointing. Anointing is what? Anointing is the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So when we are ministering with anointing. We saw Isaiah 10, 27. The yoke will be broken. Okay? The work of the devil will be broken over their lives. Suddenly they will be set free. Okay, So that's the way to do it. The power of the spirit. Minister with the power of the spirit. Uh, and then what we can also do is sometimes when we are praying with people, we may recognize that there are certain dedications. Remember earlier we said, uh, how does Satan work? How does the uh, invisible world affect the visible world? Through practices. We, we see that around us. Like in our culture, we know what that means. People have religious practices. People have vows. They have dedications. They have, um, uh, uh, you know, certain rituals. Now, through all those things, maybe a stronghold is established. So when we are praying for that person, we may feel that there is such a dedication or there is such a contract that has been built with the devil. So while doing ministry, we have to break it. Okay, we have to break it. One of the ways to break it is, of course, you know, you pray, you fast, then you can command. You can command because authority comes from our words, isn't it? So we can just command it and say something like, I break this curse in the name of Jesus. No longer will this curse affect the family. I break this vow. I break this dedication in the name of Jesus. So these are all prayers which we can make over others. And when we first break, do you remember the tree and the root? So you can cut the tree. For some time, you can't see the tree. But if root is there, after some time, again it will come back. So when we are breaking the uh, vow, the dedication, the curse, then what are we actually doing? We are saying from the root, remove the whole root. Now, if I take the root and I destroy it, can the tree grow again? It can never grow, isn't it? So that's the point. We have to go for the root. So whenever we see issues of deliverance, always ask the question, is there a root? Because if we address the symptoms, today's symptoms will go. Tomorrow it will come back. But if we go for the root, what is the root issue? Was there a dedication? Okay, break it. Is there a stronghold? Okay, destroy it. Then the tree will never grow back again. So while doing ministry, these are questions we have to ask. And um, yes, pray over them. And some practical, other practical things we can do is we can maybe, you know, maybe they have gone through some uh, terrible time in their childhood or growing up years. They may need someone to counsel them. So even these things help. So when, when uh, you know, one deals with the trauma of a difficult situation, that will also bring healing to their hearts. Then if the heart is healed, uh, Satan and demons cannot come and create trouble. Right? Those are the practical aspects. You break the curse and all. And then if they have to undergo some form of 
uh, counseling or instructions, then put them on to a person and they'll be free. Now coming to exercising authority in an organization. Let's say we are working for someone and in that organization, people are involved in some kind of uh, unrighteousness by demonic spirits. We feel like that. Right? If we if we go to that organization, maybe there are uh, some dedications and people are involving in rituals, and uh, so the the workplace has these unrighteous things going on with its origin from demonic spirits. How to deal with it? Same thing. We just pray over ourselves. We declare the power of the blood of Jesus over our lives. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid that anything will touch us. We can also uh, just pray a blessing on our uh, office, on our colleagues. And uh, over the space, if you want, you can pray something like, OK, I sanctify this space in the name of Jesus. Right? If you feel like, oh, there can be some demonic presence, don't worry, just, just pray a sanctification prayer over that seat, over that table, uh, you know, over those instruments. And just carry on with your work. And if we specifically sense that there is a certain demonic spirit operating, you know, maybe something to do with corruption in money or something to do with, you know, people's, um, uh, uh, you know, bad behavior, wrong relationships, all this we are observing. You can just speak protection over yourself that, okay, these things will not affect me. And be cautious. Don't get involved. Uh, stay away from all these unnecessary interactions. Just do your work and, and come back home, right? In that way, we will still stay protected. Um, remember, because we said that uh, demons can occupy spaces, isn't it? So as a believer, wherever we go, if you feel like, okay, you know, you're traveling, it happens. We are traveling, we go somewhere, we are occupying a room and you're not feeling very comfortable. You feel like, okay, something may have, uh, maybe there's another presence here. Nothing to worry. Just pray in the name of Jesus, sanctify that place, right? Command every demonic spirit to leave in the name of Jesus. Invite the Holy Spirit to come, fill that place and you carry on with the things that you need to do. So that's how it works. See, these are the ways in which we can actually exercise our authority in different spheres. So with this, we um, will move on to the next topic, which is more about deliverance. So we look at that in the next session. If there are any questions, we can discuss. If it's not, then we can uh, stop. Uh, past experience when I was with uh, uh, huh. ICICI, like you know, it was a corporate exposure. Okay. So they had this thing, you know, at every financial year. Now that we are in a new financial year, so they or a new branch that is open, they have something called as Homa and uh, thing that they do uh, in the morning. Yeah. So they ask all of us to, you know, be there. So what could have probably been the wise thing to do for me to upfront say I, I don't want to be a part of it, or for me to go be there and then just pray not only for myself but also for the place and then come back yeah no if it's possible to not be around that might be better so you can always try for that but i understand i mean even in, when we were studying in college uh, they would have the ceremony of dedicating all our instruments so the teachers would insist all the students have to be there right so yeah it's a little tough in our settings but if possible that you don't want to be there you, you just escape right like you tell them beforehand uh, if it's possible that hey i won't be able to stay and then uh, just leave but if it's not possible if they're insisting maybe you just hang around in one corner and like quickly leave or... don't involve don't engage don't engage in the ceremony Asking what about food? What because about food? Food. Uh, yeah. So see, the answer for food is quite straightforward, actually. Uh, it is there in uh, 
first we have discussed that earlier we already discussed yes, no but yeah. the tricky part is you know see for example uh, it so happened that i was just uh, taking a friend of mine they had purchased a new car so this happened last week so it was what temple there was some hmm. okay. iskon temple somewhere near rajaji nagar so what was back of my mind is the to ask them to come to church for good friday or for easter so they asked me at the car parking lot would you want to come to the temple up front i said no mm. so then back of my mind it will be like you no know, when i asked them to church yeah that was one so yes. similar like what sagara so the food no the prasada yeah. so we say no but when i just go and give a christmas cake then it just uh, yeah yeah correct yes so uh, see first corinthians chapter 10 uh verse 27 it straightforward it says if an unbeliever invites you to a meal and you want to go eat whatever is put before you without raising questions of conscience okay so if they call you to a meal and just don't ask any questions whether it's dedicated non dedicated you can eat but if they tell you that it is dedicated then refuse then refuse that's what this section says so first corinthians 10 from verse 27 verse 28 but if someone says to you this has been offered in sacrifice then do not eat it both for the sake of the one who told you and for the sake of conscience so the bible itself is giving us what to do in such a situation all right so let's take a break we'll come back and we will uh, discuss the next chapter thank you